did you get x to the 2 ninths? We still add those exponents, however, one's negative. So we know that 4 ninths plus negative 2 ninths. Addition rule says different signs subtract down the bigger number, we get positive 2 ninths. You could write this as a ninth root of x squared. I need to know how many people are 3 for 3 on those ones. Good for you, all right. If you're not reviewing those rules that, that you missed, was it a sign error? Was it subtract or was it a multiply instead of adding? Those are the big ones right there. I'm looking for those. Are you okay on the first three, folks? Are there any questions on the first three? Okay, now last one. That one's kind of fun, right? Lots going on here. Lots going on. We've got big fraction. We've got huge parentheses, all raised to an exponent. What we're going to do is break this down little by little. We're going to completely ignore the denominator for now. We're going to wait till we get all of this stuff simplified as much as we can, and then we're going to, we're going to include the denominator there. You with me? Let's do it. So we have this large parentheses all raised to the fourth power. Can you tell me how many things inside of my parentheses are being raised to the fourth power or need to be? Three. How many? Three. So not just these two. We also have that number three. Don't forget about that three. So we know that this is going to give me what? Good. The reason why that is because I have three to the first power. I take an exponent to an exponent. It means multiply. One times four is four. And that's why we get three to the fourth. Now here we have x. This is a one-fourth power to the fourth power. We're taking an exponent to an exponent. You need to multiply that. So it's going to be one-fourth times four. It helps to write this stuff out. Don't, don't just do it all in your head. Sometimes that's more <coughs> tricky. Next up, we get the y. We get all three things. y to the negative two-thirds. We're taking an exponent to an exponent again, which means we need to multiply. And I'm just going to put that denominator up there because we need to keep track of it. Did you make it that far? Good, all right. Let's see about those fractions now. I'm going to leave 3 to the 4th. Uh, you can put whatever that is, 81, if, you, if you'd really like to. That's, that's fine. In fact, on your final answer, it's probably going to be 81. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and simplify whatever fractions we can. We have 1 4th times 4. How much is that? So we're going to have just x to the 1. x to the first power. We have 4 over 4. Those simplify to give us a 1. Times y. How about negative 2 thirds times 4? Negative 2 thirds times 4. Negative how much? Negative 8 thirds. Negative 8 thirds. Okay. Nothing simplifies there. Remember, this is over 1. And we still have this denominator, x to the fourth, y. Okay, all right. Are we done? No. We still have common bases on the numerator denominator. You need it so that if you ever have a fraction, everything's being multiplied. If you have the same bases, you need to combine them. You can't leave it like this. This isn't good enough. This is about halfway done. We have one more big step to do. We're going to look for anywhere we have common bases. For instance, our x's and our y's. And we're going to combine those with our rule number five, taking our exponents and subtracting them. So if I have common bases over each other, I subtract those exponents. Are you with me on that? Now, you could move this one to the denominator first and add those together. I gave you that option over there. Remember that one? You could do it this way. That's, that's OK. However, for this one, they're both positive. You need to use that subtraction. And in fact, I'm going to use the subtraction here as well, just to make everything using the same rules. I'm going to do it this way. Are you all right with that? OK, so we're going to keep going on that way. So the first thing I know is that 3 to the 4th, that's as good as I'm going to get out of, the, out of all the, there's only one 3. We can't combine anything else with that. But I do have those x's and those y's. This is x to the first power over x to the fourth power. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take x to the, what is it? Are we going to add them or subtract them? Subtract. Yeah. 4 minus 1 or 1 minus 4? 1 minus 4. 1, the top one, minus the bottom one. Whatever this gives me, that's going to be my final answer for my x's. Right there, that's my exponent there. 1 minus 4 times y. Okay, we have negative 8 thirds over y to what power is that one? First. Is it just going to be negative 8 thirds? Does that 1 do anything? Yeah, subtract 
we're, we're subtracting it. Yeah, so it's y to the first power. So when you're doing this, you go, oh, okay, I know that my common bases are one's on the numerator, one's the denominator. I know to combine those, I subtract exponents. Top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So it's not just negative 8 thirds. It's negative 8 thirds minus 1. Raise your hand if you're okay seeing all that stuff. You guys in the middle of the art with that. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Let's keep going. <coughs> 3 to the 4th, I'm going to leave it. x to the 1 minus 4, how much do we get out of that? <laughs> times y to, oh, negative 8 thirds minus 1. Negative 8 thirds minus 1 is the same thing as negative 8 thirds minus 3 thirds. Find a common denominator. Negative 8 thirds minus 3 thirds is the same thing as negative 11 over 3. Negative 11 thirds. This is a fraction class, right? We're, we're beyond this, so I'm, I'm not going to really spend a whole lot of time doing this, these basic fractions. You need to be able to do that part on your own. Yeah? You need to be able to do that part. So take our fractions, common denominators, subtract them. We get y to the negative 11 thirds. Are we going to leave it like that? Nope. Yeah. Rule number seven says I'm not going to leave any negative exponents. Negative numbers, sure, but negative exponents, no. So how many things do we need to move down to the denominator? One, two, or three? Two. The three to the third, we're going to leave that. I'm sorry, three to the fourth. We're going to leave the three to the fourth. But the negative exponent, we're going to drop that to the denominator, thereby changing that to a positive. The y to the negative 11 thirds, we're going to drop that to the denominator, and making that a positive exponent. And that, folks, is as good as we can do. 3 to the 4th over x to the 3rd, y to the 11 thirds. Positive exponents all in the right places. We've combined everything we possibly can. You're done. I don't need to see the radicals. I just wanted to make sure before that you knew that they existed still. But that's as good as we can get. How many people enjoyed that problem? Don't raise your hands. You're a lion to be eating. Enjoy that. Yeah. Takes a lot of steps, but did you understand it? How many of these kind of problems are going to be on the test? Oh, no more than 16. <laughs> <laughs> 17 posts. I don't know, one or two. There's a lot more material that we have to cover besides just this. Can you follow it, though? Yeah. Of course, that, that took us a while, but it, when you get the handle on these, these rules, stick with them, have them in front of you when you're doing your, your homework. But another thing, when you're doing your homework, you need to progress past looking notes, doing a problem. Looking notes, doing a problem. Looking notes, doing a problem. If you're doing that, when you get to the test, you don't know well enough. Okay. If you're having to refer to your notes every time you do a math problem, you don't know it well enough. Okay. So you need to go back and make sure that you can do a couple with your notes. That's great. Look at the book for a couple examples. That's fine. Then come away and see if you can do the problems by yourself. Okay. That way you know that you can do these problems. So make sure you're, you're trying that on your homework. Now, let's extend the concept just a little bit further. We, we should be okay on all this stuff. However, there's a couple more things that we need to be able to do with this. Namely, what can I do with that thing? Oh my gosh. It's not just multiply anymore, I have some subtraction. Well, I'm going to make this kind of a, a similar problem um, over here. Essentially, I just dropped the denominators. I've made this similar problem. Now, I want you to ignore this for a second. Just ignore this one. Look at this one. Could you do that? <coughs> How would you do this? You, what, what's that called when you multiply each one? Not factor. Factor is the opposite of what we're about to do. We're going to distribute. Remember how to distribute? I hope you do. Well, you should. If you're in this class, you know it. I mean, you, you've done this a long time. Distribute says you take this outside one and you multiply it times each inside one, right? So can you tell me what is x to the third times x? x to the fourth. How are you getting x to the fourth? Okay, this is x to the first power. So how I do this, I do, oh, x x cubed times x 
minus x cubed times x cubed. Are you seeing where all these things are coming from? Let your know if you do. This is distribution. You need to know distribution at least to be to be here. That's, that's, you, you need to know that. Now, if we have x to the third and x to the first, we know that we add those common bases, the x ones of those common bases, we get x to the fourth minus, what is that, x to the sixth or x to the ninth? Ninth. X to the sixth or x to the ninth. We're multiplying common bases. Don't get, let your mind trick you and go, oh, this is nine. Common bases, what do you do with those exponents, folks? Uh, You're going to get x to the sixth. You okay with that? We can use this idea of distribution even when we have rational exponents. It's fine. It's the same exact thing. When we took x to the third times each of these two, we're going to take x to the three-fourths times each of these two. However, instead of just doing this in your head, you could probably, most of you could probably just go from here to here, right? Mm -hmm. I, I hope so. I mean, you just x to the fourth, x to the sixth. No problem. I'm going to have you write these ones out like this so that you can see the rules. You see, the problem with distribution with rationals is people a lot of the time, they love to do this. They love to go, oh, x to the three sixteenths. I'm done. Because you think multiplication, we're not multiplying. Okay, we're adding those exponents because we're multiplying common bases. So what I'd like to see from you, sure, we're doing x to the three-fourths times x to the one-fourth. We're taking the first outside factor times each inside term. Are you seeing where this is coming from? Okay, then we're going to have a minus, and we're going to do x to the three-fourths times x to the third. Can you tell me, if you ignore this, does that look so familiar? Is that familiar? We just we started the, the section off of this, right? Well, today off of that. You can do that. What are you going to do to combine those exponents? Yeah, exactly. You're going to add those together. You're going to add these together. Don't rush through this stuff, otherwise you might make a mistake. Go slowly, think about the rules, do them deliberately. You have x to the four-fourths, or x to the first, minus x to the, the, the three-fourths plus three, that's three-fourths plus uh, twelve-fourths, that's going to be fifteen-fourths. Add those together, you'll get fifteen-fourths out of that. Check my math and make sure I did that right, by the way. So x to the first. X to the 15 fourths. By the way, can you combine x to the first and x to the, this is where we're stopped today, can you combine x to the first minus x to the 15 fourths? Can I subtract those? Yeah. Let me ask you a different question, similar question. Does that equal x to the first? I need to know that. What do you think? <laughs> wow, I have some stumped looks out there. It's a good thing I asked about this. Can you combine this? No. Why not? Can you combine this? No. Can you combine this? No. Can you combine that? No. Can you combine that? No. Like terms have the same variable, the same exponent. If you do not have like terms, you cannot combine them. Do you have like terms here? Are they the same variable, yes, to the same exponent? No. no. You cannot combine that. Unless you have exactly the same variable, the same exponent, you can't add or subtract. Multiply, divide, sure, because you know you can multiply x cubed times x squared, right? That's fine. That's x to the fifth power. No problem. But as soon as you start subtracting or adding, you cannot combine those like terms. Have you really understand what I just talked about? Okay, good. Start there next time. <laughs>